Okay, we're back to thinking about the data. We're going to now move away from uh, this least square fitting idea and just to talk about this idea of the interpolation aspect of what we want to do with this data. So part of what the least square fit does, it allows you to get trend lines out, but it also allows you to do interpolation tasks, right, where I have some value of this data I want in between. I don't actually have a data point there, but I can use this best fit curve to give me fill in uh, values for places where I don't actually have data. So interpolation is an important task for any data and in fact the whole concept of a lookup table is very closely related to interpolation, right? So it used to be in the old days you'd have these lookup tables for values of logarithms and sine functions and you'd look up on the table where it is but oftentimes you know the the the, the, the scaling of how finely cut those values were would have a finite extent and so you'd have to fill in the missing values by interpolation. Okay? So interpolation is an important task and it's even an important task for the computer as you train your computer to do lookup table tasks. Okay? So what we're going to do is go back to our original data and we're going to look at, I want to in, get interpolated values at some range here. X2 is in the interval 0 to 7 in steps of point 0.1. I want, I want to fill all these values in by using this data and some interpolation. So one of the commands in MATLAB is called interp1. Okay? And let's, let's talk about how interp1 works. So I can produce some new data using interp1. So it's one, degree, one dimensional interpretation. I put my data in and I tell it where I want interpolated values. So that's the structure. Give me your data, the x, y points. Tell me where you want to fill in data. So this is vector x2. And I'll give you back the vector y2 with all the interpolated values. Okay? So let's go ahead and draw what this might look like. So plot uh, x, y first. And we'll make that uh, with a black uh, circles. And then we'll also plot x2, y2, the interpolated values, magenta with a, sorry, line width. Two. Mm. Okay, here, there. Okay. So now what this is going to do, give me original values, my original data plus the interpolated values. So let's go here and plot this thing. And there it is. Now, Let's talk about what this thing did. It did what you used to do when you were a kid. It connects the dots. So if you look at the magenta line, what it simply does in this interpolation scheme, it says, oh, look, I have a point here and a point here. If you want to value in between those two points, I'm just going to draw a straight line between them. And whatever you are, that's your value. It's a simple connect the dot strategy for interpolation. Okay? Notice you can't do extrapolation with such a method, but it works exactly the way you might have come up with as a kid. Draw a line between the points, and that's how you fill in the missing values there. Okay? So that's sort of, uh, in some sense, the most simple-minded thing to do. But you might want to get a little more sophisticated than that. Uh, and there are some options here. And let me t talk you through some of the options. Some of the options on the interp1 are quite nice, and it depends upon what you need it for. And here's one, nearest. So I can use the nearest command. And what that's going to do is say, I'm not going to just draw a line between these points. I'm going to say, whichever point I'm closest to, I'm going to take their value. Okay? So that's how it's going to work. Let's see how it does it in practice. There it is. So what the nearest command does, any point in between points is just going to say which one am I closest to. If I'm closest to the point on the left, I'll take the left value. If I'm closest to the point on the right, I'll take the right value. And this is what you see. These points here take on the values of this point, but as soon as you get halfway across, it takes on the value of the next point. So that's a stair structure. But in some cases, this is actually important, especially if you want, for instance, you have some data and you want it to take integer values, you would just take the nearest integer, for instance. This is kind of one way maybe to think about that. 
not very smooth, but again, depending upon the application, this is very important. When you do data fitting, you have to understand what your purpose for the data is. So there are cases where this nearest command is very important for you for the type of data you're working with. Okay. The other one that's in here is called spline. And what spline does is what we talked about what spline should do. Look at that beautiful curve. So what the spline does is it does this extra trick of smoothing. Notice when you connect the dots, it looks a little choppy. That's because the derivatives, I mean, all the, the connect the dots goes through all the points, but the derivatives are mismatched at every single one of those points. What the spline attempts to do is says, let me draw for you something that goes through all the points, but now notice how smooth it is because at every one of these points, it's enforced the constraint that the derivative and the second derivative are in fact continuous, so it looks really smooth. So when you take data and you want to fill it in in a smooth way, a spline is the way you want to go with this thing. By the way, the spline command can be either accessed directly with interp1 by having this as an option, right? So you have this option. The other possibility with the spline, and I'll show you the spline command directly, is spline x, y, x2. That's it. So, spline, here's your data, give me values at all the x2, interpolated values at all the x2. Okay, so that's how that spline would work. Let's just verify for ourselves that it, in fact, gives you the same thing. There it is, and there's the spline. Okay, so we start off with polyfits, polyvals, which are the best least square fits algorithms here. We've moved on to uh, this interpolation command, which you can use with a spline setting or otherwise. And again, this is an important way to do interpolation tasks. Okay? And you're not doing a best fit, you're just basically now having an algorithm that goes through every single point and here gives you sort of a very nice smooth representation of a function that goes through every single point. Okay? Next is we want to do least square fitting to nonlinear data, so we're going to come to that next.